Hello, Bio220 students, and welcome again to Online Microbiology. This lesson will cover material from Chapter 8, Microbial Genetics, and we're going to get into recombinant DNA. Uh, recombinant DNA, or rDNA, is when DNA molecules formed by laboratory methods of genetic recombination, or the combination of different genes from different organisms, such as molecular cloning, to bring together genetic material from multiple sources, which creates sequences that would not otherwise be found in a typical genome. Recombinant DNA is possible because DNA molecules from all organisms share the same chemical structure, and they only differ in the sequence of those nucleotide base pairs within that identical overall structure. Recombinant DNA in general is the name for a piece of DNA that has been created by a combination of at least two strands. Recombinant DNA molecules are sometimes called chimeric DNA because they can be made of material from two different organisms or species. And the technology that is used is palindromic sequences and leads to the production of sticky and blunt ends when removing or cutting pieces of DNA with restriction enzymes. So again, what is recombinant DNA? It is simply DNA that has been formed artificially by combining constituents DNA sequences from different organisms. As far as using the technology, recombinant DNA technology can be used to isolate and clone a single copy of a gene or an entire DNA sequence into an indefinite number of copies, all of which are identical. These new combinations of genetic material are introduced into the host cell where they propagate and multiply. The technique is a way of, this technique is called recombinant DNA technology. Typical steps for obtaining rDNA. Step one is the DNA fragment containing the gene sequence to be cloned, also known as the insert, has to first be isolated from an entire DNA sequence. Step two is then cutting that sequence out and then joining it to another strand of DNA. And then this involves the insertion of the DNA fragment into the host cell, usually using a vector, something that can transfer that desired new sequence of DNA into the host. Next step would be that the recombinant DNA molecule that are generated when the vector self-replicates in the host itself. And then the transfer of the recombinant DNA molecules go into an appropriate host cell. The selection of the host cell carrying the recombinant DNA molecule using a marker, and then replication of the cell carrying the recombinant DNA to get a genetically identical cell or clone. So isolation, this is the first step in making recombinant DNA and it's used to isolate donor and vector DNA. The procedure used for obtaining vector DNA depends on the nature of the vector. Bacterial plasmids are commonly used as vectors and these plasmids must be purified away from the other bacterial genomic DNA. There is a process called ultracentrifugation. It's a way of extracting plasmid DNA. Now in doing so, plasmid DNA will form a distinct band during ultracentrifugation, especially when used in a solution of cesium chloride. Cesium chloride is effective because when it is centrifuged different regions of density will form in that cesium chloride. 
where parts of it are more dense with cesium chloride than others. And thus, the, plas the density of the plasma DNA will begin to go to where it matches the density of that region of cesium chloride. Now, the plasmid band can then be collected by punching a hole in the plastic centrifuge tube. Video provided. There is also alkaline lysis, which is another technique that relies on the observation that at a specific alkaline pH, bacterial genomic DNA will denature or come apart from its complementary strand. But plasmids, however, do not do this. The subsequent neutralization precipitates the genomic DNA while the plasmid DNA stays in solution. Phages can also be used as a vector for cloning DNA in bacterial systems. Phage DNA is isolated from a pure suspension a phages is then recovered from a phage lysate. Now the step about cutting DNA sequences. Restriction enzymes are always used to cut apart specific sequences of DNA, such as ecori, which cuts a circular DNA molecule bearing one target sequence, resulting in a linear molecule with a single stranded sticky ends. Sticky ends is simply a type of cut in a DNA where essentially a part of a strand is left hanging off of the rest of the double-stranded DNA. Thus forming two ends that are not hybridized to another strand. As far as insertion, <clears throat> as far as insertion goes, you will need to choose a gene cloning vector. This is a vector that is any DNA molecule which is capable of multiplying inside the host to which our gene of interest is integrated. In this process, a restriction enzyme functions as scissors for cutting the DNA molecule. At this point, that restriction enzyme cuts the host's DNA, allowing for our DNA cut previously, our recombinant DNA, to enter into the host's genome. And then a ligase enzyme is used to join that's DNA with the DNA of interest that will produce the recombinant DNA. Now introducing the vector DNA into a host cell. In this case, a plasmid vector is useful at, in, at introducing the DNA, the recombinant DNA into a host before it can reach contact with the host's DNA. The vector is added to a flask containing a culture of E. coli. Calcium ions, usually in the form of calcium chloride, are added to the flask, followed by a brief heat shock. This perturbs the bacteria, allowing holes to form in the surface of their plasma membrane, at which our vector can actually enter the E. coli. Now, in other ways, there are also the use of phage vectors or using viruses to insert our vector into bacteria. The, these introduced by infection of bacterial lawn, the, these phage vectors are added to a culture of bacteria growing on agar plate. The culture of growth or growth of viruses is made more difficult than the culture of bacteria or fungi by the fact that viruses will only grow. Placing the gene in the vector. Well, this involves plasmid DNA. The DNA molecule must be small and can easily be separated by size. Bacterial cells will need to be broken and opened 
and chromosomal DNA will need to be centrifuged down to isolate the plasmid of interest. This leaves the plasmid DNA in the liquid above the pellet during a centrifuge process. The plasmid can then be purified before cutting with a restriction enzyme. Now, the restriction fragments, which are the cuts after a restriction enzyme has cut a strand of DNA, the restriction fragments from donor DNA are mixed with plasmid DNA and then joined by, sti by common sticky ends where they can hybridize. The initial attraction is due to hydrogen bonding, but the sugar phosphate backbone is then joined using an enzyme called a DNA ligase. So we're initially a strand on our recombinant DNA and a strand from the host where adenosines and thiamines will be attracted to each other on opposite sticky ends. Guanines and cytosines will be attracted to each other on opposite sticky ends next to hydrogen bonding. They're not permanently attached to each other until the DNA ligase comes in. Now, here are some examples of recombinant DNA technology, those used for producing insulin. Uh, the DNA for insulin is first isolated, and a plasmid is made of the DNA that was removed from the bacterial cell. A restriction enzyme is used to cut the plasmid DNA open, leaving sticky ends. And then the insulin gene with complementary sticky ends is added into that cut plasmid. DNA ligase enzyme splices and joins together the plasmid DNA to the insulin DNA or insulin gene containing sequence. The plasmid is now genetically modified and is inserted back into the bacterium. The bacterium host cell divides and produces copies of this desired plasmid, which includes the insulin gene. The bacterium makes human insulin using the gene in the plasmid, and the insulin is extracted from the bacterial culture. This is just an example of a process of taking a circular piece of plasmid DNA, opening it up, and then adding in a desired gene or vector DNA to form a recombinant DNA, where a DNA ligase enzyme must eventually come in to seal that, those complementary new strands. And then once that new plasma is made and inserted into a bacteria, the bacteria will do a pretty good job of replicating large amounts of that plasmid, as well as activating the genes of that plasmid to produce insulin. Now, practical applications. These can be used in the, prepar the preparation of gene maps to see if certain genes are present in certain microbes or organisms. In revealing details of various infections, Diseases, such as those that involve inborn errors in metabolism. Useful in finding out the complete nucleotide sequence of a genome of an organism and identification of genes. In detecting cytogenetic abnormalities, including Down syndrome, multifactorial disorders, atherosclerosis, coronary artery disease, also in preventing various genetic disorders, including inherited hemoglobin disorders, phenylketonuria, and retinoplastoma, as well as helping to gain an understanding on a molecular event, biological processes like growth, differentiation, and aging. Other applications include the replacement or correction of deleterious mutation by the transfer of a clone gene into a patient, production of genetically modified organisms or transgenic organisms for providing particular product or nutrients, and then gene therapy for the removal and replacement of a defective gene 
with normal healthy functional genes is a process known as gene therapy, which may one day help those who have mutations that cause sickle cell anemia, severe combined immunodeficiency illness, which SID is due to a defect in the gene for the enzyme adenosine deaminase in 25% of cases. There are also several negative features as well, such as extensive erosion or genetic destruction of plant germplasm, ecological imbalance, production of monsters, production of dangerous toxic chemicals, production of highly lethal microbes immune to strong antibiotics and medicines, as well as their use in microbiological warfare to kill humans, animals, and plants. And well, that concludes this brief rundown of recombinant DNA in microbial genetic uses. Peace out, everyone.